biggest thing we're going to go through today is just some training system components. So the training system components, this is basically the training systems that we follow here at D1. And you should follow at any type of performance-based system. So with training components, what you'll see here is we're going to follow a functional movement pattern. So does anyone know what that means? Or how we break that up? Or what a movement-based system looks like? I might have talked to you guys about it a little bit before yesterday. It's like the, the push-pull. It, it, they're just movements that... Um correspond to the movements of their sport. That is exactly correct, good job, Jake. So it's, we're training movements, not exercises, basically with athletes. So we're training pushes, pulls, carries, different things that you can correlate, which is gonna help them better, whether it's a football player, swimmer, track, anything that's gonna help them move better on the court or field, because that's our goal. If you're not moving better, we're not doing the right things. So I would break these up, you kind of break it up like a tree. So you have movements for both lower body, and you have movements for both upper body. So how we'll break that up for both upper and lower, can anyone tell me kind of what we have? How will we break that up any further as I write the answer? Push, pull. Yep, we can either push or pull for both our upper and our lower. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was a good answer, good. So with push and pull, we've talked about this a little bit. Typically you'll see for each answer. So upper body will get a little bit different. So upper, you can break it up slightly different. So we can have a horizontal push, or you could have what? What would be the second one? Vertical. Vertical push. Same thing here, and then same thing here. What would be an example of a horizontal upper body push? Bench. Bench press. Yep, easy bench press, push up, stuff like that. So within that, we can also break it up one step further. What do we think could break this up one step further? Bilateral or unilateral movements. So that can go for all four of these. So if someone give me an example, what would be a bilateral, if we know what that means? Oh, can't spell it. Horizontal pull. Uh, bent over rows. Bent over rows, yeah, the two arm bent over row. Now what about a unilateral vertical push? Uh, seated, a single arm over here. Yeah. Yep, some type of single arm shoulder press movement. Does that all make sense when we come to upper body training components? Now lower body, we break those up similarly, but you're only going to really see kind of two different movements. So with the pull, with lower body, you can either see a hip dominant pull, or a knee dominant pull. Can anyone tell me what a hip dominant pull, a hip dominant bilateral pull looks like? Deadlift. Okay, yep, deadlift. What's another example? Give me a unilateral now. RDL. Okay, RDL, yep, but what type of RDL? Single leg. Sing, a single, single leg RDL, split. yep, yep, or a split. Split kind of is a little different, it kind of falls in the realm of both. So that's typically where you're majority working one leg, but you can also work another leg. You'll see that also on our pushes as well. So with split, a lot of times it's kind of like a little in between. Now, can anyone give me an example of a bilateral pull? Or sorry, a knee dominant bilateral pull movement for the lower body? Flying leg curl. Mm, yes, correct. Because why? what's the main mover? The, the hamstrings. The, the hamstrings the main muscle mover, what joint component? The knee. Knee. Great example. Let's move. What's another one? That was a great example, though. Great job. Okay. Correct. Uh, maybe like Timber's doing, I think. Uh, sliding leg curls? Yeah. Similar to what like Jake said, the gap with the sliding leg curls. Another one which kind of falls in this category, it's it's kind of a push and a pull, is any of your type of bridges. So bridges, whether loop bridge, because um, it is a posterior chain dominant movement, falls into the pull family, um, but then also typically you are pushing throughout the floor to create that bridge. So that's one of those kind of in-betweeners. Those are the only ones which you see in between the motions here. Now, push, we break this up into three ways. A unilateral, 
bilateral. Can anyone guess this, the third? Split stance. So a unilateral would be anything single leg work. So what would be an example of a unilateral lower body push? Uh, so think lunge. Or that, is a split stance. that would be split stance. Yeah, exactly, because both feet are on the ground. Both are still going to work, maybe not to an equal percentage. Let's think of like a rear foot elevated split squat or a step up where only one foot is working predominantly the entire time. Now a bilateral, that would be your typical squat, um, goblet squat, leg press, Nick, what you said your favorite movement was, stuff like that. Now the split stance is where you're going to see um, the split squats, the lunges, any point to where both feet can properly push into the floor, whether it is equally or not. That's going to be our split stance with this. Does anyone have any or questions off of the training and movement based system? So like a yeah, go shoot for Bulgarian split squat or Bulgarian, Bulgarian split squat. Yeah. It would be a unilateral movement because it's a yeah. rear foot elevated. Yeah. You take that back leg basically out of the equation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions or examples before we get into a little quizzing? No. When yep. you, um, because we did the, we changed the stance for the RDL. The RDL, yep. So, um, would that, does split stance not, um, apply for, like, the hip? It, it, it can apply slightly, but so, for example, when we just went here, <laughs> our stance leg, the back leg wasn't quite working a ton in it, so you can have a slight split, but think of that more as a combo between the unilateral and the bilateral. The reason why with a, um, less advanced client, you would split stance a hip dominant movement is because they're not quite ready for unilateral, mm -hmm. um, but we want to get slightly more unilateral work out of the side. So it would be, it does play a slight role, but more as a modification rather than its own movement. So rather than a lunge, split squat, or Bulgarian being its own major compound or movement type of system, it's more of just a modification to make something slightly easier or slightly harder. Now there is one or kind of Two other rotation or systems we kind of go through when it comes to a movement-based system, you're going to see rotation or rotational. So within rotational training or throughout a movement-based system, you're going to either see rotation or anti-rotation. So then the difference between being the two, rotational training with rotation, the athlete is moving throughout that plane. A lot of times they'll move throughout a transverse plane or even a frontal plane of movement. The anti-rotation, what would that look like? Resisting uh, lateral force. Res resisting lateral force throughout that transverse plane. Now, what's a good example of an anti-rotation movement that you guys have seen since you've been here? The, the one where you guys were like pulling and then you were like making it yep. shake. The power off press hold, exactly. Now the power off press is in and out, also a similar anti-rotation movement, but how can we make that rotational? Just twist, just rotate. Yeah, pretty, uh, not a trick question, just <laughs> rotating and twisting. Yep. So it, don't have to think too crazy with it. That's how you can kind of go right there. Now, the last one of a movement based training system, these are kind of accessory. These are your majors. These are the kind of just the extra carries. So, with your carries, so you can see here, it's kind of three different options. Or, well, let's say uh, two options broken up. So, you can have an overhead carry or you can have an underhand carry. So within those, we can then break it up in two different ways. So it can be bilateral or unilateral. And then same thing right here, bilateral or unilateral. Can anyone give me an example of a unilateral underhand carry? A single arm farmer's carry? Single arm farmer's carry, the name of that would be suitcase carry. So a suitcase carry is that single arm farmer's carry. Now what about a bilateral overhead carry? Don't overthink it, just what would be a bilateral overhead carry? Shoulder press? What? No, so now they're carrying it. So they're moving with distance like, and the same. Overhead med ball. Yeah, med ball. Go overhead med, holding a med ball overhead, just walking down and forth, yeah. So it's similar to what it's described, the carry is exactly what it's called. They're carrying, whether it's an overhead carry or an underhead carry. There's a little in between where these do mix. Or what would that be called? When the overhand and underhand mix? Yeah, mix, I don't know what it's called. Offset, it would be called an offset oh, yeah, yeah. carry. So the mix between the two of these where you combine them for more of an advanced training principle would be offset, meaning there would be one overhead component, one underhand component. That would be when the two mix, but again, this is a little bit more advanced of that carry component. 
So like, what would be an example of that? An offset carry? Yeah. So there's a lot of examples. We could literally just go with a uh, overhead dumbbell suitcase carry. So I have one arm overhead, other arm suitcase carry. Now you can do it different options. You could bottoms up waiter carry, also carrying underneath, going through some different stuff kind of going throughout there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Now kind of going through some quiz work uh, going through. What I want to see, can anyone, let's go, I'll give you guys 30 seconds. Uh, now I want you guys to work in teams. Nick and Jake will be together, and then Kai and Maddie, we will be together. I want you guys to come up with, Nick and Jake, I want you guys to have a bilateral lower body push. I want you guys to have a unilateral upper body pull in the vertical training plane. And I would like you guys to have some type of rotational movement or mixed with it. Now, Maddie and Kai, I want you guys, you're gonna do a hip dominant unilateral pull paired with a bilateral horizontal push. And I want you guys to do some type of carry component, whether it's underhand or overhead. Okay, just come up with it, like, with a team real quick, and then we'll just kind of grade. 10 seconds. For our push, you just say vertical? What? For no, our... horizontal for your push. Horizontal? Okay. Okay. You guys ready? And we're going to go, Nick, you and Jake first. Yeah, give me first your lower body component. Lower body, bilateral push, yep. squats. What? Um, Paired with your upper body pull. Which is... In the vertical training plane. Yeah, single arms. Oh, here. vertical? Yeah. I thought you said horizontal. Horizontal for them, vertical for you. Uh, Did I say horizontal for you guys? Yeah. If I said horizontal for you guys, that's okay. Yep. What do you have for horizontal? Single pull? arm seated rows. Single arm seated rows. Yep, that's okay. So seated as in, do you have them seated on their butt or on a knee? On a knee. On a knee, okay, cool. Now, uh, what was your guys' rotational component? Uh, either pelvic press twists or he said Russian twists. Russian twists, both good options, both rotating through. Um, nice, good. Uh, we did single leg RDL okay. for the pull. Yep, for the unilateral pull. And then for the push horizontal, we did bench press. And then for the overhead bilateral carries, we did med ball carry. A med ball overhead carry, yeah. right, cool. And you can always throw in some twists, so uh, a carry component could have a component of a lower body push as well. So what would, how would you make your overhead med ball carry also a lower body push while you're carrying it? You could like um, add a squat and then... You could, you could add a squat while you carry, which might be very difficult. I was thinking yeah. more of a, a lunge. I so like you see lunge. that a lot is an overhead med ball lunge. Uh, because the med ball is a little easier to carry overhead. So I see that done quite often. Or even still with your guys' row, where you went unilateral with the knee up, which is a more difficult version. You could go less difficult, both feet on the ground, or you could even add a bird dog component to where you're kind of keeping it up. So you can always modify these, but every type of movement or exercise you guys are gonna see given to an athlete here, you can always find into a realm that fall into this. There won't be anything that falls outside of this board right here. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. So this week, basically the only thing is Coaches are gonna ask you like, hey, what movement plan or what are we doing right now? Whether it's a single leg squat, like what type of push or pull is this? And that was gonna be what they kind of quiz you on throughout this week, for the remainder of the week, and then we'll start fresh with warm ups on Monday. Does anyone have any questions over anything that makes up a movement based training system? Um, so as far as like when you guys are designing workouts and, and stuff, are you like, like are you guys like intersecting you know, carries rotational into the lower and upper body, like yep. push pull. Yep, so they, they all work. So typically with a, a good training base component or a good training system, we want to be even. Mm -hmm. So we want to have um, a lot of the same amount of pushes and pulls, especially with some type of programming, but it depends on your athlete. Some athletes don't need as many pushes as they do pulls. Some athletes need a lot more pulls than they do pushes. So a lot of it comes down to what type of athlete you're working with when it comes to programming. But a good majority, when you're thinking of just a, basic general program, if you can keep everything somewhat even, you have a pretty solid structure to that program. So, so that makes sense. But like your carries and rotation, not nearly as much as your normal pushes and pulls, but it does get worked into that. Think of this as accessory. Mm -hmm. So when you guys are like, like designing like training plans, like even if, you know, um, like I guess a basketball player is working on their lower body, mm -hmm. their lower body 
um, I guess like from their push and pull workouts wouldn't be the same as someone who's done like volleyball or basketball. Exactly, yep. For specific sports, you would have different components because they had different demands. Mm -hmm. So we always want to look up when you start programming, we'll kind of get into this when we do our programming lesson, but you have to look at the demand of their sport, what they need, so what, how are they advanced, where are they at right now, what they need to get better at their sport, and then that kind of allows you to make up your program, if that makes sense. Any so questions? You want to keep push and pull even. Um, are you, like what makes you choose between bilateral and like unilateral for like your exercises? Uh, pushes and pulls. So it depends on what, a lot of times your bilateral movements are gonna be bigger compound based exercises. So a lot of times when you come to a workout component, so when you make up a big workout structure, let's go ahead and erase this. Nobody needed that, right? Everyone got it? Yeah. As I erase it, if not, oh, we'll have a video of it. Which is good. <laughs> What's well, nice is you guys have a video of it, so it'll be smooth. So when you make up a big workout component, typically we follow a structure like this, kind of going through. Uh, workouts follow, if we're thinking just uh, into their big movement-based training, typically you see some type of power block first. So we won't go into the power block quite yet, but then we'll just get into that. Typically you see their main compound, so their A block, is a main bilateral. With you could have then some accessory unilateral pair here, but then from there, we're gonna go with some type of unilateral accessory and a block B that pairs well with their block A and then any extra accessory work, whether it be your carries, rotation, stuff like that in a block C or even paired with your block B, if that makes sense. So you wanna have the most demanding exercises first yeah. when we're choosing it. So always, if you think of this, if it's a Bulgarian split squat versus a, a barbell back squat, which one's the most demanding? Your back squat, yep. So I would want that to be at the beginning, towards the beginning of their programming, not only because it's more demanding, we wanna make sure they're ready for that, but also they're gonna get a little bit more out of that training from it. Right. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Does that answer that question? Yeah. Cool, awesome. We'll get into big programming uh, education as well, where we kind of dive deep into all that, but kind of just start, start you guys out with, these are your pushes, these are your pulls, this is how you, what goes into a training squat. Any last questions? <laughs> Everyone good? Awesome. All right, you guys ready? I believe some of the uh, crew is out there. We're kind of dive out there. Um, and that's all education. So the only thing I want you guys to do in this week, I know we only have about 45 minutes left here today. You guys probably can gather here a little early. Um, just ask the coaches, hey, what, what's their focus? How many pushes? How many pulls do they have throughout their session today? Um, why is it this? Why is it that? What's this, like, why are you doing this versus this? Cool. Just try to learn as much as you guys can.